Pause that. Good morning, Sign and Thrive members and those of you who might be watching this after the fact. Welcome to the Thrive Live webinar, LinkedIn for Notaries on June 30th, 2018, where I'm excited to uh, share this particular webinar with you. Our special guest is Sandra Long, author of LinkedIn for Branding, the or for Personal Branding, The Ultimate Guide. Uh, thank you so much, Sandra, for joining us. Bill, hi. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad that you are. Uh, when I reached out to you a few months ago, you know, I wasn't sure uh, what we could do. And this is just for me that just really come together into a pretty amazing presentation. And the fact that you were so open and willing to share your expansive knowledge with such a, a niche group of people really says a lot, uh, a testament for you and your business. So I really appreciate it. And for those of you who don't know, Sandra is a, an international consultant that really talks to uh, companies all over the country, all over the world about how they can represent not only their representatives, but their company brands um, in the best light possible and also to help attract their ideal customers, which is really what we're talking about today. Sandra, I, I know you've got a great presentation for us, so I'll just kind of hand the reins over to you. Thanks again for joining us. Okay, sounds great. So I am going to click on share screen at this point. Wonderful. Perfect. I am so glad to be here, Phil. Well, we're really glad to have you. Oh, and I just want to kind of tell you also, um, for those of you who are watching live, uh, the way that we'll basically um, do this is uh, Sandra's got a, an amazing presentation for us. We're going to go through uh, the chat availability is always there for you. And then at the end of the session, we'll do a, a live Q&A. So if we haven't touched on the question that you'd like to ask, Sandra and I myself are here to answer those questions for you. All right, Sandra, take it away. Okay, well, good morning and thank you very much for your, to your whole community and thank you very much for, it's been fun getting to know you as well, Bill. Awesome. So, perfect. We're gonna spend a little time kind of um, going through what, what I believe to be the most important things to think about um, as a notary. Now, of course, I'm not a notary, but I've learned a little bit about your business in talking to Bill and uh, reading up a little bit about what you do. So I'm very delighted to be here and talk to you. And I thank you. I know some of you have reached out to me online. Some of you have read my book, and I really appreciate that very much. And uh, one of the things that is always important that I like to share is the idea of being unique and being yourself, being authentic. Don't feeling like you have to be just like everyone else. You don't have to be the blue fish. But in fact, the more you can really be truly who you are, um, the more people will be attracted to you and what you have to offer. Mm. So when we think about LinkedIn, there are over 560 million people that are on LinkedIn. It is growing really, really rapidly. And I've been on the platform since 2005, which is really early. But in the last five years, it's gone just really uh, huge growth in terms of users. And when you think about it, there's another stat I want to share with you. And that is that every single day, every single day, there are over 45 million profile views so think about that. That means that people, that's a major activity that people are doing. They're looking online to look at people. So um, it's something that, you know, people are, I'm sure, looking at your profiles. Uh, and I would say the more active you are, you know, offline and online, the more profile views you are getting. So they're looking at you and they're looking at your competition. And they're looking for people to partner with, people to hire. It's just what is happening. So you're either part of that uh, and making it work for you or, or not. And so I love to, the, these stats because they're, they kind of put it in perspective how important this has become. And in fact, if you think about what, you know, is the view valuable, to me it, it creates your first impression. Somebody might... Um, first hear about you online. They might get that initial first impression. Or a lot of times if you're, if you're being referred uh, to, to someone, maybe it's an attorney 
or an escrow agent, somebody like that, they're going to, once they hear your name or maybe they received your email, they're going to look you online, look up, look you up online. And typically that would be on LinkedIn to decide, do I want to engage with this person? Do I want to call them back? You know, is it really a good referral? So it's getting that validation. So that view is very critical. And this is an interesting stat that I got from LinkedIn and they basically did a study and people nowadays believe that, you know, creating that impression, um, you know, that, they, that over 65% believe that your online impression is as important. And when I go back to when I started my career, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been in the workforce a long time, there wasn't an online impression. You know, you made your reputation, your impression by you walk in the door, you smile, you shake hands, you try to have, you know, nice things to say. You were creating that impression. But today's impression, as you can see from these stats, people are getting those impressions by what they see online. So it's something that, it's a whole new factor in how we do our business. Now, how do we... soundtrack for us I'm not sure how that happened okay apologize mm -hmm. for that I think that oh, was me <laughs> how do I get back into this bill um, it should be one of your tabs that might be open okay I apologize everyone okay can you see that now yeah we're still up okay so sorry um, so, you know, really, um, that online impression is, has you know, changed the way we do business because now people are, are judging us. And, and, you know, it, and it really is true. And I want to ask this question. I was wondering, you know, in the last couple months, LinkedIn uh, made a big change in terms of how the profile looks. And I was wondering if what you thought about this, Bill, have you have you noticed it? And what do you think? Wow, I, you know, I don't think that I even had noticed prior to this. So this one in the upper left-hand corner, that's the, is that the old way? Yes, that's the old one. Ah, and wow. Then, yeah, and this happened, um, I bet some of your members have noticed this. It happened yeah. um, in about, in May for most people. And you can see that the, the headshot moved over. A lot, of, a lot of the main features at the top of the profile moved over to the left. Yeah, it's and, almost more Facebook looking now. Right, isn't it? Yeah, interesting. People like it. I mean, also what I love is you can see the contact information much more easily. Right. So um, anyway, so that's pretty, pretty nice. And the thing that I want to mention about LinkedIn, they're constantly making changes in terms, you know, it's, it's on a daily basis, which is why what I do is 100% focused on keeping up with LinkedIn because it changes so often. Okay, so when I think about your, if you're thinking about your profile, I like the idea of you thinking about who is your target reader? Who would you like to be reading your profile? Because lots of people are going to read your profile. It's going to be definitely your target prospect, but it's also going to be your neighbor and your, your maybe people you used to work with and people in your community and uh, people that uh, went to your college, all different people are gonna be looking at your profile, but really thinking about who is that person that you'd most like to read your profile because that's the person that you want to try to attract. And today's buyer, the person who's gonna hire you, um, is definitely a different buyer than it was 20 or 30 years ago. Today's buyer, they're digital, they're connected, they're mobile, and they're, I like to think that instead of sort of selling to them, buyers are more in charge than they ever were. And so today's buyer wants to, they want to find people that they want to work with more than being sold to. So if you are connecting with people that are in your sphere, so people that are good prospects for you and you're being uh, providing value, then you're going to be connecting with people that are on that buyer's journey. And that's really a great place to be because their people today are seeking, uh, not only they're going to look at your profile, but most buyers today, they want to do business with someone who is actually uh, in their network. 
someone who's you know connected to them in some way. That is so huge, especially in our industry right now. It's a it's a highly driven by relationships. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, you say that, and I, it's really interesting, but I'm hearing that across the board, so that the relationship piece is, is paramount, right? Yeah. So here's five steps we're going to talk about. Uh, the first part is on, you know, your experience and, and really being able to be clear on the value that you provide. Then we're going to talk about being found, because you can provide all kinds of value, but if people can't find you, then that's a problem. And then the third part is, you know, how, how do you impress them with the language and the images and the media? And then building the strategic network and then obviously using content. So all these pieces kind of work together. And um, so this is kind of how we're, what we're going to talk about this morning. So on expertise, my first piece of advice on expertise is to be specific about what you do and what you offer. Um, because... To be general, it, it's just not um, helpful to people. And I know that sometimes people feel that perhaps they are limiting, but in, it, it's really the opposite effect. The more specific you can be in terms of what you do, um, the better that people can visualize working with you. And then particularly for your group too, um, your geography, um, I believe, and I'll ask you this question, Bill, I believe that the, the geography that you serve is very specific uh, for the notaries. Is that correct, Bill? Yeah, it's, it's specific in that, you know, most of us are commissioned in one particular state and then within that state, we have a, a certain geographic perimeter that we'd be willing to travel to and work in. Absolutely. Right. So being specific about your geography, mm -hmm. um, to me, in your business would be very key because that way, you know, the, the person who is on that buyer's journey will identify themselves that, oh, this is a person who's serving my my area and is performing the type of services that I need right right and then beyond that this might surprise people but I believe it's really important and that is your personal qualities so what is it about you your whether it's your personality your vision the way you work what is it uniquely about you that is special you know is why people want to hire you again what are those things and when I thought about it, this is what I came up with. I don't, I, and I wanted to ask you, Bill, what you thought. I, to me, when someone's going to be hiring someone in the profession of a notary, they're probably looking for these kind of qualities. And Bill, what do you, what do you think about this? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, this definitely nails it. And I'd love to hear from the group as well. So, you know, when you think about uh, what you like to promote, what are your strengths to your potential customers? What, what strengths do you do you see for your customers? You know, I, obviously I think honesty is a huge one. Efficient is a big deal. You know, that's a big deal to me. I like smooth and efficient signings, being organized, of course, trustworthiness, detail oriented is what Judy says. Um, punctual. That's a huge one, Heather. Thank you. Punctual is so huge in our industry. Timeliness. Exactly. Uh, integrity, big deal here. Plus um, keep them coming guys. Uh, let those roll out. Um, I think of, uh, Kirtland also says timeliness. I think that's a, that's a huge one for us, but also competency. You know, you've got to know what you're doing. Confidence is another uh, uh, big attribute as well. Um, just at, oh, service oriented. Yes, customer service. Enjoy meeting new people and helping people meet their needs. That's the, you know, it's funny, Sandra, you know, when you talk about the, personal qualities. I think this is probably for me the most important aspect of building a profile uh, because it allows for that, that human connection. You know, you're not just a business, you know, it's not all business. It's, it's something deeper. And I, I found after dozens of coaching calls and sessions that this part is the hardest part to include in the profiles. It's um, there's this fear of either oversharing maybe or, I'm not realizing the worth that that level of personal connection and vulnerability brings. Great. Well, those were really excellent um, comments that you got in terms of the punctual, punctual and detail oriented. And I wrote them all down. Those were great. Um, you know, and so I think you were asking about how do you actually bring those into the profile and 
I would say that you do that, it's very nuanced because I don't like, when I recommend people writing their profile, I don't recommend that you come across as being overly boastful. So you need to incorporate it in such a way that this is, that this is, uh, that these are important traits to you. I'm gonna show you an example from one of your members. This oh, is, yeah. yeah. So what I liked about hers, and I, thank you, Jean, I don't, I don't know if she's on, but she connected with me. Um, she made the comment, you know, in the third sentence, my daily goal is to represent you with integrity and professionalism. Awesome. So, and, and then, so if you read this, she's not coming across, in my opinion, as overly boastful, but yet I feel confident in her by the way she used her language to, you know, you, that you could see that this was a value that she was talking about. So she wasn't just, you know, coming across in a, in a she was coming across to me in a very positive way. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Good job, Jane. <laughs> great. Great. All right. So there's lots of ways, lots of different elements of our profile. And of course, some of them are very cut and dry, you know, and it's in, in you know, it's, you know, you're, you're your experience, for example, is very important, where you work, your company, where you went to school, what your certifications are, your, all these things are you know, very much cut and dry. The headline and the summary are the most strategic, and those are the places where um, you, know, you really have to put a lot of thought into kind of how you're you know, expressing yourself. But these are all important, prof, you know, important elements for notaries. Yeah, huge. So let's take a look at Bill. All right. So um, we talked a couple about a couple of these things. We the headline is super important, and um, I think Bill did a great job in the headline. And Bill, do you want to mention anything about your headline? Um, well, you know, I I just when I read your book, and that's how we connected. But I read Sandra's book, and I implemented the strategies, and really just the way this is laid out and. It was almost like permission to to talk more about just one one thing. You know, a lot of times we're we're taught to pigeonhole yourself, and you've got to be just one thing. And after reading Sandra's book, I realized you can be everything that you are, and that was really powerful to me. And just being able to space it out and make it clean so it looks professional and and clean that way was was really it was something so simple that really just blew my mind. Uh, so I'm so grateful for that. So. Yeah, that's well, it. Now I have more work to do. <laughs> so, well, it's good. Good job. You've used keywords, so um, mm -hmm. which is which is good um, because people are going to be searching for you potentially by keywords. They could be looking for signing agent, business coach, uh, mobile notary, etc. So, so it was really nicely done. Now, the area, the summary, which is just below that, the written part. Um, I like to actually coach people and say. Even though it's called a summary, I would rather it be called an introduction. If you think about what Jean wrote, she, she, hers was really an introduction. Right. Um, and in here, you've, you've taken a lot of keywords, so it's possible that I think because of the way you've written the summary, you could be found. But I feel like there's an, a missed opportunity for you, Bill, because I, I really recommend writing it in the first person and, and also... Um, you know, sort of telling your story, and especially with you, because you do a couple different things. You, you, you have an opportunity here to kind of explain it. So if I'm coming to your profile, I could be coming to you because I'm either looking for a notary, or I could be looking for coaching on being a notary, correct? Right, absolutely. Right, so you've got to be able to have, use this introduction to talk about both of those and kind of weave your story, um, so that when they arrive there, they understand what you do and how that all works together. So it's an opportunity area for you. Well, I'm so glad that we are doing this because that is probably the coldest paragraph I think I've ever written about myself uh, in <laughs> business. I mean, that's really just real matter of fact, nothing warm and interesting at all about that. Uh, so the fact that anybody's even looking at my profile is a shock to me. So that's awesome. Thank you so much. That's really good. And I'm going to get on that for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have a question for you. If you don't mind, Sandra, can I ask this question since we're on this page? Yeah. Uh, Valerie asked if the banner at the top is a searchable element. 
Uh, no, but I, I think you did a very nice job on your banner. I meant to mention that your banner was very nice. That's a custom banner that you made. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's very nice. Be it's, so it's really more the image, the impression that you're creating with the banner. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and then here on certification, uh, this is, was part of your profile too that I just wanted to point out looked very nice. Great. So all of us uh, on the call, if you're part of this course, you are probably already certified or really close to being. So make sure you include this as well. Great. So I think, you know, we've kind of really talked high level about a lot of things. And, you know, this is uh, hours of, of discussion. We did it in just a few minutes. But I hope you get the idea that your profile should be uniquely you, whether it's about your experience, um, the thinking about the clients that you want to be working with, the geography, your personal qualities. How do you bring all that together so that you're really building confidence and trust? Just like you want to build confidence and trust when you meet someone in real life when you're having coffee, you want to build confidence and trust when they're on LinkedIn looking at your profile. Mm. So the next part is being found. So we want to be found. And this was a little bit quicker. So in this example... You know, there's, there's a few ways people can find you. Certainly they can find you in LinkedIn, but the other way is through Google. And this is one of my associates. And if you put your name in Google, uh, LinkedIn is very high search authority. So your LinkedIn profile should come up relatively high, if not at the very top of a Google search. And so some people will actually find you in this, in this way, um, in addition to finding you from LinkedIn. Now, there's a feature that you can make your profile public when you go into your settings, and I'm going to recommend that you check this and make sure you are public so that you will be found through, through the, um, the Google search. And you're basically able to edit your visibility and you, have, you can toggle all the sections you can decide. And I recommend you know, keeping majority of all that open. You want people to see your photo, your headline, your summary, your experience, your education, your certifications. You want that to be fine. So basically this means someone who doesn't have a LinkedIn account can come and see your profile. Oh, great. That's really yeah. good. To know. So we talked about keywords. and th These are the words that people could use to find you. And, and Bill, you would definitely uh, use keywords in your profile. And this is something that is a part of how people do searches. So I wanted to mention that as being important. Now, so they found you. Um, let's think about how we can even be more memorable with the language and the stories and the images. So I do recommend first person, and we saw how nicely Jean had started with a first person. Mm -hmm. and it just makes people more um, comfortable, I think. More, it makes you more approachable uh, if you write in the first person. But one of the things people often tell me is, oh, no, I'm afraid to write in the first person because I don't want to sound like I'm boasting. Right. Right? Yeah. So, um, so th there's, there's a nuance to this. And we saw the example how, you know, Jean talked about how this is, this is how she likes to, this is how she, how, she, how she likes to work. It wasn't like she was saying, you know, I am the most, you know, I'm the best notary in, you know, Arizona or Phoenix or wherever. She's not saying that. She's, she's coming up with, if you read what she wrote, the way she talked about it was a nuance. And so it did not come off as boastful, but it was talking about her values. So you have to work on it, but it's really worth it. And for me, I like the idea online. You know, we all want to be experts, but if you can position yourself as that helpful expert and not being boastful. This is what my goal is to be considered a helpful expert and not be boastful. Yeah, this could be really huge for us too. And stop me, Sandra, if you plan on going a little deeper into that a little later on in the content section, but we have such opportunity to really connect with the people who not only are just looking for notaries, we can be that helpful person that coaches people into what a notary does or the difference between an acknowledgement or a jurat or whatever uh, in our articles that we post or in our posts that we just make in LinkedIn, right? Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, we're going to get into that a little bit more. Oh, um, perfect. All right. Great. So, I just want to mention um, the, on the summary, or like I said, I, call it, I like to call it the introduction. There's a lot of ways you can do that. And in my book, for those of you that read my book, these are the different examples. And there are examples in the book as well as in my course. But, um, you know, so you mentioned one of them. You said that you're doing a couple things. The Weaver example is perfect for you, Bill. So because you are 
you're a coach and you're a notary. And I would suspect that there are a lot of notaries that maybe do up to maybe three things, right? Yeah. So really, am I right about that, Bill? Absolutely, yeah. Usually multiple, multiple hats going on. Exactly. So guess what? When you have multiple hats, you have the possibility of confusing people. Yes. And so you, it's your job to use that introduction section to tell your story, to kind of bring it together on how it works together. You know, so I can see for you, for you, Bill, for example, you can easily talk about, you know, being, starting out as a notary and then how you, you know, started this business helping others. I mean, I'm sure it's a good little story that would make a nice um, approach for anyone who's coming and arriving at your page. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely. And then like Judy says down here, she's a real estate agent. She's having a hard time deciding which one to pick. That's yep. perfect to blend the real estate and the passion for the closing into yeah. the, the notary. Well, for stuff. Judy, uh, I would definitely, I would definitely do both because people are going to, some people are going to be looking at her because they know of her from real estate. They were recommended or whatever referred to her others from notary. So you want to bring that together, all of it and just tell that story. Wonderful. So I love stories. I love it to be even a thread of personal. I'm not talking about posting pictures of your family. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about some sort of thread about you. And these are just a couple of examples. They're in the book, but um, George is a uh, civil engineer. So he talks about how he grew up with a family that uh, his father was a carpenter. So he's a son of a carpenter. And Michael started in his career. He was discovered on a golf, which is a little bit, makes it a little bit different. Um, you know, bringing whatever little personal element in and then going right into the, you know, the business and kind of weaving that. For me personally, if you read my profile, I start talking about how I was very early on one of the first women in sales. And to me, that's helpful. It resonates with my clients because a lot of my clients are in a sales capacity. And I'm able to talk about how that helps me with my work. So... Um, on the visual side, visu the visual piece is big, and it didn't used to be, but uh, several years ago, the visual part really uh, improved about 2013. So there's a lot of different opportunities. Um, obviously, the headshot's been around. You must have a great headshot. And for all of you that are doing this business, if you're wondering, if you're on the fence, if you're not sure, spend the money and get a great headshot because you will be very happy that you did you will feel more confident and you know, it's the kind of thing where I've, I've had people say, well, this will do, but um, honestly, unfortunately, people judge us by our, he our headshot. So it's something that I just re recommend for everyone to do. You know, that's a really good point that you said there, that unfortunately people judge us because that's, that's the reality of the world that we live in in business. They are making judgment calls on all of this. So it is definitely worth it to, to upgrade the camera experience, get the headshots, or at least um, dress up for a selfie if you could at yeah. the worst case scenario. But yeah, definitely upgrade that yeah. experience. Exactly. So I'm, I'm showing this at the top of my profile. You can see my background banner is a custom one with my company. You can see my headline with my you know keywords. You can see the beginning of my summary, how I, again, make it personal and talk about um, you know starting out in field sales early on. Yeah, and then perfect. you can see below my media, which I'll get into in a minute as well. So love this feature that you can put a video on here. So this can be, there's, there's a couple ways you can use video, but the, what I'm talking about right now is in your, in your profile. So you can put video as uh, under your experience or under your summary. And it really, it really is nice because as people are looking at your profile, they can, they can click right there and stay on LinkedIn and, and watch that video of you. So if you've been speaking, if you're, you know, Bill, it would be perfect for you because I'm sure you, I know you have a lot of videos, yeah. but for any of you that are, you know, you're speaking or maybe, you know, if you're in the real estate business, I'm sure there are videos for that, you know, whether it's your real estate company, you can, it doesn't have to be necessarily one from you. Maybe your company has one that's on your town. If you think creatively, there's a lot of ways you can incorporate video into your profile. That's huge. That is huge. Yeah, it really is. Um, and then, of course, your networking. You know, the networking is so key. Having a strategy. I mean, this is where, you, you know, people, 
it's amazing to me, I have to say I'm shocked almost every day still, that people don't really have a strategy. They, I get questions like, who do I connect with? And, um, you know, so I guess it's, it's worth the time to think about who do you want to be connected with? And for me, you want to connect wisely and you want to have a real relationship if you can. And even if you don't know the person, uh, you know, again, using like personal invitations, there's things you can do to, to, to warm them up and to pr make it personal. Because honestly, some of us are going to connect because we are, you know, we're building a business and that's fine. But just thinking about how you operate on LinkedIn is important. So this is a question I get a lot. Do you find this is a question, Bill? Do you hear this question? All the time. This is huge. One of the reasons I love this business, though, is that we have a, a pretty clear-cut answer. Okay. So what is your clear-cut answer? So for it's going to be closing agents, which depending on the state you're in, it's going to be either escrow officers or uh, closing attorneys uh, as our prime target. And then, of course, we have... Uh, loan officers and real estate agents as kind of the uh, kind of working backwards from there. Okay, so that's perfect. Thank you. I'm going to get to that in about a minute and a half because before we even get there, so that's great. So you know a part of the strategic network or you just mentioned it, but I want to also, and I don't skip over this next part, and that is the people that you already know. Yes. And the, reason, the reason I, right, because the reason I say that, so people that are, your colleagues now, people in this group, people in uh, where you used to work, if you're a real estate agent, people that you know from real estate, people that you know from law, people that you know from your community, your neighbors, your people that you went to school with, your family, people from church, people from soccer, people from people that you know, because why? Because even when you're out searching for that escrow agent, you're searching for that real, real estate agent or whatever, um, the more you're connected to them through these other people that actually know you, the better it's going to be. That is so true, guys. Does any of this sound familiar? You're in the course. We talk about cultivating your current network so much. You are you're really only always one relationship away from having your dream business, but you probably already know the person that is going to make that connection possible. Exactly. And when we think about that buyer's journey that we talked about in the beginning, that buyer, not only does he want to be impressed or she want to be impressed with what they read about you, but they want to be connected to you somehow. They want to feel like there's a confidence level of, oh, uh, my friend Joe knows, you know, knows Bill. So that's, that puts me at ease. Right. So these are, you know, there's a lot to this. There's a ton of things about all these different levels, but Basically, uh, your first level connections are the ones that are the most valuable, and those are the ones that you mutually agreed to connect with. And, um, you know, so, there, so that's something that those are very prime. You can be messaging them and, and whatnot. Uh, it's very valuable. You can see their, you know, connections. You can see what they're doing, their posts and whatnot. It's, it's the most valuable relationship that you have on LinkedIn is your first level connection. So... I'm going to go into what you had just mentioned if you want to get into looking for an escrow agent. I just, this is just an example. You can use any terminology you wish. So in this example, at the top of LinkedIn, there's an um, escrow agent. I put escrow agent in the search bar, right? Great. And once you do, this is just the basic free search. Once you do that, uh, you'll look for something that says all filters. And when you open up this bar, this, this, the top right, that will open up. And that's called all people filters. So in this example, I did escrow agent, and you can do it by you know first level connection, second level. I, so if, say I'm looking for a notary, somebody that I know, I would put in first level connections, and it would pull up the people that I know by first level uh, that are escrow agent, right? Or I could do second level. In the example that I did in this slide, I did Detroit. I just said escrow agent in Detroit. So, and the results are, there's 60 results below, and you can see what the people are that are on that search. As wow. one, this is just one example. I mean, there's a million ways to play with this. There's a million tricks to this, but um, this is just to give you just an initial perspective on this. That's huge. So, and this is, a, this is available in the free version of LinkedIn, right? Yes, yes. Now, you can only, you're limited by how many searches you can do per month. So, if you're doing a ton of searches, then you're going to need to know some workarounds because um, 
you can only, and, and I would say for most of you, you'll be fine. You'll be, but if you're like going crazy on searches, they're going to, at some point, they're going to send you a note and they're going to say, now you must upgrade to premium. Um, but uh, for most of you, you'll be fine. No, that's good to know. And that's, uh, that just highlights too the importance of having a strategy ahead of time. So if you're limited on your searches, you really want to make the most yep. searches at the time. That's right. That's right. There's a lot to this. This is just a quickie overview, but I wanted, and since you and I had talked about this bill, I wanted to share it. I'm so glad you did because guys, this, I mean, literally everybody that you would want to connect with, especially on the professional realm, your escrow officers, your attorneys, real estate agents, anybody who's hustling and making stuff happen in this business are right here on LinkedIn and you just right there type in escrow officer or escrow agent and you're going to have a list of potentials to connect with. And remember what we're talking about here, guys, we're not talking about cold emailing or cold calling. Everything Sandra's talking about and everything that we teach in the course is about warming them up and really building those authentic relationships to grow this thing. Awesome, Sandra, thank you. Sure thing. All right, so we touched upon this a little bit and that's being a thought leader, being that helpful expert, not going online and being super salesy, not going and saying, you know, like if you were a real estate agent, you wouldn't just post pictures of your homes. That would be really a turn off, right? You'd be, you know, in that case, you'd be, instead you'd be posting, you know, market intelligence or market trends, things like that are helpful to people or tips on staging your home. You wouldn't just put, here's my, my listing. So it's the same thing with being a notary. You wouldn't just want to post, you know, here's how to hire me, right? You want to be, how can you be that helpful expert? Guys, that is everything right there. If you, sorry, Sandra, to interject, but when we talk a lot about building value in our relationships, this component of being a thought leader is right along those lines. It's real easy to get in the, almost kind of the, the, the muck of just self-promotion, just talking about our services and how great we are and how we can help them. But consider the perspective of the, your target audience and what they need in their lives, whether it's stress relief or whether they need to know what the changing escrow laws are. When you become that resource, that, it, that is what boosts your value, not the self-promotion stuff. Exactly. Thinking again on that, that, that buyer journey, what do they need to know? What are they worried about? What do they want to know? And then and answering those questions, perfect. Great. So on LinkedIn, one of the big things I'm going to recommend is interacting on LinkedIn, not just uh, even, not even just, I mean, posting is good. I mean, and, and we talk about posting, it's important, but a lot of times you can just, you can win clients or relationships just by interacting. So somebody that maybe is a target prospect for you that posts an article or posts an idea on LinkedIn that you think is a really interesting piece go ahead and make a comment and say you enjoyed reading their post and, you know, and ask a question or be engaged because that person will definitely notice you and chances are they'll look at your profile. So, and the more you do it, the more comfortable you get, but by interacting and mainly the interaction, the most valuable interaction is commenting, making an insightful comment or helpful or complimenting someone. And one of my favorite things to do in all of all time is when you can congratulate someone so if somebody is a prospect of yours and they've done something that you read about, I mean, congratulate them. They will, they will remember you. That is so huge guys. And that's so important um, in your daily dues. You know, the things you do every day is actually schedule some LinkedIn time to where you, you force yourself to interact like that. Cause it does make a huge difference. Right. Exactly. Um, so publishing articles and I'm going to show that, you know, those are very different from text. It's a published article. Um, and they're blogging. So you can blog on LinkedIn without a website. So here's a couple of articles that, um, that Bill has. So thank you for that. So I was glad to pull up an example. So frequently asked questions. Now that's good because that's, I think your, your potential coaching prospect would want to know, have these questions and they might go right in. Have you have, have you had some good uh, views on this Bill? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it gets, a lot of views and it gets shared a lot between this and a, a couple of the other articles on there. Yeah. I'm really glad I started this. It's a nice clean format too. Easy to post. Good. Excellent. Excellent. And um, you know, and the other thing is with all this posting, whether it's a regular post or an article, you want to think about all the different ways you can share it even outside of LinkedIn, because you can get a lot of your views up, 
by, you know, sharing this thing, these things to Facebook and to Twitter and to all the different places where you spend your time. Yeah, I think that's what I did too. I shared it to the Facebook pages just by copying the link. It was really easy. Excellent, excellent. Um, so we've kind of gone super fast on a lot of these things, but I hope that these five steps have been helpful. And I, I want to just kind of remind you that, you know, yes, it's, you know, what you do is important. And yes, where you went to school is important. But honestly, who you are is the most important, the, the unique way that you do business and the unique way, the unique qualities that you have are really the most important thing. And, and so, and being able to be found and being connected to people strategically, people that you know and people that you want to know, those are really the two groups of people that, are, that should be part of your strategic network. And then being that helpful expert, all of these things, so that you can, you know, be, be someone that is that orange fish, right? And the only way to do that is investing in your brand and your network. And I like Bill's idea of, you know, allocating time, not just daily. I mean, your daily time is your, is your interaction, your engagement. But, you know, you should also invest your time in really building out your profile, uh, thinking through strategically your network and having a strategy on content because all of this, it, it takes some thought and I would really encourage you to invest in yourself because it comes back. It's the way to me, it's, it's the new way of selling. The old way of selling was, um, was very different. I was a part of the old way of selling because I remember doing cold calls and walking into office buildings and people would actually talk to me back then because there was no internet, but today's buyer, uh, wants to be in charge today's buyers on the internet and so now we have to think about selling it in a completely different way and appealing and being helpful to that buyer as they're on their journey that's absolutely right and when you're thinking about uh, the buyer in our case you know the escrow officer you know when you're interacting when they get a referral to you or when you meet them at a networking meeting they really are going to LinkedIn they are checking the legitimacy of your business so this is this is all so critical well, great. So I think we're, we can take some questions uh, if you'd like, Bill, if there's any additional questions. I know we had some during the, during the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, um, oh, we've got one from Heather here and then guys feel free to just pop them into the chat window there and we will uh, get to those. Heather asks, uh, do the links to the blogs on LinkedIn come across in Google searches? Like, yeah. Uh, yes, they do. Um, they they do and but not the posts like there's a difference between the published articles versus the posts um so be aware of that so the, the regular posts when you do a post so you have to think about which uh what makes sense i like to think that the published articles are more for your evergreen content meaning um they stay on your profile like i showed you they're on bills and he probably wrote those a long time ago whereas the posts you, you know you'll see them on your activity page but you don't see them you know, if you're looking six months later, you know, if, if you've done a lot of posting, you're not going to find it. So, um, so really the, the thinking about what, what type of content, what do you want to keep as your body of work? What is rep? So like the, the articles that Bill has, those represent part of his body of work, just like he's got YouTube and various other things that are part of his body of work. Where, whereas the posting is more um, time-based, you know, it's, it's going to be here for a short period of time. Um, so that's the way to think about it and hopefully that helps. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, the other thing, the side of that too, that automatically comes to my mind then is that if the articles are searchable, that means that we can use search engine optimization and keyword optimization within that article to help increase our chances of being found. Is that, does that sound logical and right? Yeah. The other big thing is using hashtags, Bill. Oh, really? In what way? Yeah. So, well, now the articles, when you post, publish the article, it will ask you, it's really, LinkedIn is prompting you to put hashtags in there. And um, the content, the best way to be searchable for content within LinkedIn is through the hashtag. Well, that's, that's awesome. All right. Good to know. Cause I, I've been hashtag resistant. So. Oh yeah. You got to get into that. They're <laughs> really good. Yeah. Yeah. For both posts and um, articles. All right. Good to know. And then the, one of the other questions that we had earlier, I think was Kirtland asking about how to create the custom banners and I'll share because I see in the chat group, but I want to make sure everybody who's listening um, uh, 
only can get this. Um, I, if I use Canva, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com for all of my um, graphics that I just need to create real quick. It's a real easy template service. And they do actually have a LinkedIn uh, template up there, and that's exactly what I used. Uh, sometimes you have to kind of play with it a little bit because it doesn't fit perfectly, but um, if you tinker with it, you'll, you'll get what you need. No, that's great. That's great. Um, okay, another one. I would like to have my LinkedIn account critiqued and get some feedback on what I have as my profile info. How would she go about doing that? Okay, so actually this maybe ties into um, the, uh, the other piece we were going to be introducing, Bill. Yeah, okay, great. Well, let's talk about that in a couple minutes. Or should we just talk about it now? Well, no, that's fine. We, we are going to make an announcement on, on, on uh, something that might be interesting to people, but let me answer that person directly. Yeah. Um, so if, um, so this is somebody who's asking to have their profile critiqued. Yeah. Okay. There's a couple ways you can do that. Um, so if you, you know, I have a business called post road consulting and we do that kind of work. In fact, we critique profiles. We actually have a team of writers. We actually write them. We upload, we do everything that anyone would ever want on a profile. But if you wanted to do it in a more, um, cost effective way, what you could do is you could just get the book and then critique someone, you know, find one of your people in this group and help each other out. That's a way that you could do it, you know, at no cost. So it's really depending on what you want. If you want it professionally written or professionally critiqued, we can do that. But um, again, you can just get the book and, and help each other out as well. Whichever works for you is fine. Yeah, whatever works. Uh, in fact, guys, why don't we, if you'd like the group to help critique and give you some feedback, feel free to post your LinkedIn profile in the private Facebook group. And maybe we can all take a look and help each other out. I know I have a lot of work to do on mine, so I'll wait a little while so I can make those corrections to do that. But feel free to do that. Get feedback. I've got a link to Sandra's book also in the Facebook event, and we'll post that inside the course as well whenever I record this video so you can get access to all that information that you need as well. Uh, looks like we have a few more questions here. Okay, so Vicki says, I have a personal and a business page. Should I put in my personal profile that I'm a signing agent and that I'm the owner operator of my company? Yes. Okay, quick, nice, easy answer. Yes, absolutely, Vicki, do that. So we can go ahead and connect with escrow officers. It's like a cold call though, and does seem rather cold and obvious. Should I go ahead and connect with them? Okay, so um, I'm gonna say that to me, if that's what you're trying to, if those are the people you're trying to meet, yes, but I'm going to say before you do that, connect with all the people that you know. So if you have 200 connections, but your Outlook or your email has, you know, 2,000, that means you, you are missing a lot of people that you know. You're missing a lot of people. You need to, because why make it so cold? Why not connect with all those neighbors, those friends, those coworkers, those colleagues, those alumni, connect with people you actually know. And then you're going to find that a lot of those escrow people are going to be second level connections. And then what you, there's a couple ways you can go about it. If it's a second level connection, you can either, maybe it's someone who's really super valuable to you and you know that one of your best friends is connected or somebody that you know that you trust, you could ask for an introduction. You could say, Bill, I see you're connected to so-and-so. Um, how well do you know them? Could you potentially introduce me? So that's the warmer that you can make it, the better. So to me, I always prefer a personal introduction by someone that you know, like that would most likely get you faster in the door more successfully. Um, if you don't do that or don't, you know, or, or can't do that or don't have time to do that, then I would at least think about the idea of mentioning that person in the uh, invitation that you send. So to, as much as you can warm it up is what you want to do. Hopefully that helps. You know, that's so huge, guys. Um, when you, Anytime you're doing any type of networking in this business, start with your inner circle and work out. I mean, this is perfectly in alignment with what we're doing in the course where you're cultivating that network. So I love that advice because you're going to, even if it doesn't, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get their business, but it pretty much guarantees you're going to get your foot in the door and at least be able to have a conversation and start building that relationship. All right, next question okay more about critiquing i'm going to skip that one heather highly recommends the book sandra to the whole group 
What is the name of the book? Well, the name of the book is LinkedIn for Personal Branding by Sandra Long. The link is in the private Facebook group, plus all the emails I've been sending out. It's also in there. Um, let's see. Let me just go through and see. Thank you, Heather, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Let's confused. Okay, so Debbie says, I have my notary business and I also have a video business. Should I have two pages or just combine them? Okay, so are these, are these two businesses that, um, you might have two company pages, you could have two businesses like that way, but for a personal page, you only have one. Okay, great. So she, she in the, the headline area, should she combine those as? Yes. yes. Okay. So I, I would do that. If I, if I was active with both businesses, I would have the headline, uh, to have both of those and then the summary is going to be very important for you to describe the two businesses and kind of what you're all about and I think that maybe thinking about what is that personal trait of yours that, that is run through all of this maybe it's um, you know working with a certain type of person or whatever that whatever that is it's about you that's that's unique and then you can then you can use that as kind of a unifying thing or whatever, find a unifying point so that it makes sense for people. When someone arrives at your page, they'll go, oh, um, yeah, I was referred to her for video, but this is really interesting. If you want it to make, build the confidence on the whole, for the whole profile, but the personal profile, you can only have one. So in the book, look under Weaver, the Weaver example will give you the example of what you would need to do for your summary. Yeah, that's, that's really great. That's going to be a critical role because most of us do have those multiple roles. We, you know, we have multiple services even under the uh, notary umbrella. So that weaving um, and even telling the story is really going to pull all that together. Um, yeah, and I know it was mentioned about companies. Uh, if you have a company, that's a different situation. There's a company page. So companies have their own page and they're very, that's a whole nother thing. But um you know, we work with a lot of businesses on that too to build that because then you have your company logo and all the employees are attached to the page and the company page can post. But what we've been talking about here is a personal profile, but just be aware that it does kind of work together. Excellent. Any other questions? I mean, Heather has a comment here. She says that I think you can also speak complimentary about your first connections to your own first connections. Um, it offer if, if you offer value to someone, they are subconscious, subconsciously incented to speak that way to their connections. No, I like that idea, Heather. And I also, for you all, I love the idea, if, if, it's, if you're allowed to do this, but using the recommendations, can you use that feature? Because I think that would be wonderful for you all. Hmm. Vicki says, is it possible to comment on another's post from my business page and also to invite follows from my business page? So the business page is much more limited. It's, so it's, it serves a different purpose. And so there's some definite limit. It, does, it doesn't operate the same as a personal page. Um, so one of the big things, if some of you probably have Facebook pages, right? Business pages? Yeah. Okay. So the LinkedIn page, company page, is not as easy to operate as a Facebook business page. On the Facebook business page, you can click on your friends and at, invite them to like your business page, right? Well, in LinkedIn, you have to work a lot harder. <laughs> so you have to, um, you can't, there's not, there's, they don't have that kind of feature, but they're always changing things. And they're talking about changes, you know, definitely happening on the LinkedIn company page. So let's look forward to that. Um, they're, they're also going to be bringing out big changes with groups and with company pay. All this is, I mean, almost like every single feature is changing, but those two areas, I'm expecting to see pretty big changes. That's pretty incredible. And I mean, that really brings me to kind of the closing point here, Sandra. I mean, we, we've been talking about this for almost an hour. It's been amazing, excellent tips and feedback. <clears throat> it's still very clear to me that there's so much more to learn. So if somebody really wanted to dive in deep and create a, a real um, business sustaining strategy, LinkedIn, what would you recommend? Well, um, I think that's a layup call, you know, the question. Um, I, I, love, I love this topic. And so what I learned from the book, it, when I wrote the book, I still had people that had so many questions. 
and and even though it answers it really shows a lot of examples but um, what I did is I developed a course and I'm really excited because it's just launching now and so basically this is very in-depth it takes a lot of the elements from the book but goes even deeper and shows videos there's, there's over 30 videos showing exactly how to do a lot of this stuff and um, the program is called LinkedIn personal best so it's for people that are interested in investing in themselves and their brand and their and their you know their career and their business um, so um, the, the modules it's there's a whole huge module on profile and then there's a, another very substantial module on, on building your network building a community it talks about some of the things we talked about here but a lot more and then there's also a, a, um, a course on content and all this is bundled into a membership program which again is called LinkedIn personal best and I'm super excited about it because it caused me to dig deep into a lot of these topics um, and so anyway so in your audience bill your your network is going to be getting a special discount if they're interested so I'm excited yeah. about it yeah, I'm so excited and so appreciative of that too. So guys, I'll send out the uh, link on the follow-up email on this to give you that special promo code. If this is something that you want to do and incorporate into your business strategy, you'll definitely want to consider this because as we, you know, we talk a lot about you literally only being one relationship or one connection away from having your dream business. It happens so quick. You don't even realize it. So you kind of want to maximize the uh, availability or the time in the arena to meet the person that could change everything. I mean, one person could be $100,000 a year in revenue or more. It's really incredible how this works. Yeah, I, I'm so excited about it. Um, so I, yeah, if you wanna take that, if you wanna go to that level, and, and I'd love to do that, I, I will say that we have a special launch price going on and we have this coupon for you guys, but if, you, if you're not ready for that, uh, I'm also love for you to read the book um, and I want to thank those of you that have read the book and I know several of you have I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and if you love the book um, I would love a review because that would be a favor to me like I, I love getting really nice reviews it's it's like super important for authors um, or if you just want to connect with me uh, that's great too so anyone any way that you want to be connected uh, either through the course uh, the book uh, or or send me an invitation on LinkedIn and tell me that you were on this webinar that would be an honor as well yes thank you so much Sandra thank you for spending so much time with us today I know your time is very valuable this was this has been amazing uh, thank you all for spending time on thrive live with a notary coach working on yourselves and your business as well uh, I'll send out the follow-up details again with a link to the book and a link to the uh, awesome new course details that Sandra just put out, which is LinkedIn for personal best. Uh, and I'll get you all the details on that. Sandra, thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much. Take care now. Let's have a great weekend.